Back to movie number two, just looking at uh, Mad Mapper and the file is loaded here, all ready to go. Next to that, of course, being just the scene we're going to use to composite the shapes to or build the quadrants that are going to hold the movie footage. Anyway, let's double click on that just to open it up. And here's our Mad Mapper software. Now, just to go over a few things, uh, which is probably easier if I um, basically bring it in first, but I'll just start off with. Um, just the file um, loading documents here, where you can actually just change your quadrants. I'm just going to stay on 4x4 at this stage. And I'm going to go up here and just um, bring my file by importing Command-I. We've got um, my scene I want to bring in here, but if you want to use the movie footage, which we'll be using later on, you can bring that in as well. Anyway, let's just bring that file in. And it's actually just loaded here. When we bring a movie in, it'll sit in here. When we're working with a, a software like Quartz Composer or um, Module 8 or any of the other ones that enable uh, more intense uh, features, then um, that's where they would sit in the siphon mode there. But anyway, let's just start, start with this by launching the file. Double click on it. Or just click on it. And there it is in the format at the moment. But nothing in the output viewer. To get in the output viewer, this is where we need to go over to um, our output screen here and use a quadrant. So I can load a quadrant in here and suddenly it appears. Okay, And you'll notice a few other tools down here in terms of um, mesh and mask and things like that where we can add that into it. We'll come back to that in just a, in a minute. The first thing I just want to show you is this is our output, this is how we're viewing it. But what I find quite handy is if I just use this button here, this arrow button, minimize it, I can actually bring my um, actual output viewer as we're actually going to see it with all the effects without any lines or whatever in this viewer mode here. Remember you can always so go up to um, full screen which will be the full screen of this computer being 1440 by 900 and when you want to go back again it's just command T. I'll just bring this back for the time being. Okay, so we've got um, the base art in here that I want to work with. Now, one other thing that might be quite important, if I just go right to my um, settings on that side, what is your output stage? What is the projector capabilities? Let's just say, for example, I'm going to take this to um, 1024 by 768. Obviously, you bring your material in at the size you want to output it, uh, to also the power of your computer as well, I suppose. But now, by clicking on that, it's actually um, out to a better projection quality, depending on if the, com the projector handles it all right, but let's assume it will. Now, other things that you can do here is when um, you want to, say, move or distort things around, um, you can use these handles on the side. Now, but what I'm going to do for a start is this is just our base art because I want to use this for the mapping. So I'm just going to go back to um, my quadrants here. And for a start, I'm going to lock this off. Um, you can lock it off by just clicking here and it's locked off. I can't move it or uh, touch it, just like locking any layer. You can also take the vision off as well. But in order to um, turn the vision back on or do anything with it, you have to unlock it first. So if you, if you want to turn it on or off, do so and then just lock it. Right, I'm going to bring this file in again. And essentially it's loaded here and we can only work with this particular setting. This is where the siphon uh, facility is enabling you to have multiple imagery. But in this case, we can only work with the one. We can also work in the live view as well and change things out you're doing live footage for a demonstration um, but in this case we're working just with the one image so we have to get a little bit tricky in how we do that and this is really how, how we do do it I'm going to load in another quadrant by the way we can have uh, we've got our mask down the bottom this loads a mask in here as a separate layer we can also load a mask onto the same layer we'll look at that in a minute as well but we've got um, basically a triangle shape a circle shape which is quite good you see how you can distort these just as we can with the um, triangle as well I'll go back to that and just distort that scarlet turn it around um, so we've got other shapes to work with now just for the time being I'm just going to delete that one and delete that one as you see it's very simple to bring them in and get rid of them and I'm going to add one more quadrant okay which has gone at the top 
One thing I should probably do, which is good practice, especially when you work up multiple layers, I'm just going to unlock that for the time being. And I'm just going to call this just um, BG for background. I'll lock that once more. And just for the purposes of demonstration, I'm just going to stay with one layer really for the time being, just to initially get things going. So I'll just call that um, distort there, and that'll be fine. Of course, that's the only one that's uh, not locked. We've actually got two files in here at the moment. Now let's go and have a look at see what's happened here. Now when you bring a file in, they'll just come in on top of each other. It's basically two files here. But um, as you bring them in, in order to select them, you can select any of these layers here. Um, only two at the moment. In fact, only one because that's all we've got available to us. The other one's locked off. But let me show you what's happening here. For a start, all I need to do is on this file, see how if I just move that away, it's actually just distorting the second layer here. I can just move that around anywhere I want. And um, in fact, I'll store it over here, but you see it isn't affecting that file at all. So in order to select them, we use these layers to select things each time. That's why you can see it's so important to name things correctly. Now, just with this file, the advantage of this side where we load them in, this has got its own advantages as well. What I wanted to do is I'm just going to move this file over here. And let's say in one segment of this particular um, imagery, I just wanted to have a close-up of the circle floor view here. This is where, on this side, I just drag it in nice and close. And you see what's happening here? Um, you're actually segmenting that area that you want to be um, in the view setup. So that's where if you have a, a large movie file with a range of different imagery on it, you can just use these different segments anywhere you like as you load up different quadrants to work with in order to make this happen. Anyway, so uh, we've got, uh, we went through the circles and the triangle shapes and that's a basic way to do it. What's quite interesting as well, is if I just move this out a little bit further here, and if I just minimize this now, we can see actually how it's going to look. By the way, I can still move this, and um, but I can't see where my mouse is at the moment. Now this is where it comes in handy. If I go back to uh, this tool over here, and I can turn down onto Output Cursor. So now I can see where the cursor is, so I can just drag specific areas. Now this can be quite a cool um, thing to use if you're actually working in live mode as well. Okay, so this is the actual view that you're seeing when you're actually projecting it and exactly as you'll see it, even when you go up to view it, view it in full screen here. Okay, so that's just the end of movie number two. We're going to really get into just understanding a few of these tools in a little bit more detail as we um, can explore a few more effects. And of course, when you're working with multiple layers, it can get a little bit confusing. So we're just going to stay with the one just for the time being uh, and maybe just chuck a few extras in when we look at masking.